Next up, we have Miss Angie Jones. Color as the background, 
which I just saw earlier this week when going from dark mode to light mode in an app, right? You totally missed that. What about if it's bleeding off the edge of the page? What about if another element is overlapping it? And so on and so on. The reason we miss this is because the automation tools that we use, what do y'all use for testing? Cypress, anybody? All right, uh, Playwright, Selenium. I don't test my stuff, don't judge me. I'm judging. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but the tools that you're using, they are querying the DOM to ask these questions on your text behalf. So when it asks, is the text there? It looks in the DOM, it says yes, the text is there, and therefore it's missing the visual part of this. Now, when I tell people about visual bugs, you usually say, oh, yeah, that's interesting, but they don't feel like this is a problem that they actually have. Right? I didn't know the other crowd was Y'all coming from the other top? Yeah. Oh, I would have waited for y'all. We had a whole movie, child. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, they say, well, you know, this problem isn't something that we suffer from a lot. But let me tell you, once I show you about visual bugs, you'll start noticing them everywhere. I notice them almost on a daily basis and using different apps. For example, Here's Cineworld. Cineworld is the largest, the second largest cinema chain in the planet. And they have a visual bug on the page that asks if you want to store your credit card information. Right? I see some people laughing. If this was your app, you would probably chuckle a bit and think it was like a lower severity bug, maybe on the same line as a typo, maybe a little bit higher, but not a big deal, right? Okay, let me ask you this question. How many of you, raise your hand, would store your credit card information on this page? I don't see a single hand in the building, right? So what that means is this low severity bug has cut your conversion rate down to zero. So not so low severity, right? People get really upset about this. Why? Somebody tell me, why would you store your credit card information? Anybody? Yeah. Say a little loud. So if I, they can't make it look good, why would I trust the security? Bingo. If I came here, the first thought I'm thinking, oh shit, they didn't test this. I'm not giving them my credit card information. If they didn't test this, if they missed this, I know they didn't test the banking. So who knows what they're doing with my credit card information, right? Now. People got so upset, like Kim, she tweeted about it. Your customers start losing faith in your application. But I have a theory. I think they did test this. This is not a mom and pop type of shop, right? It says it's the second largest cinema chain. I think they tested it, but I think they automated the test. If you automated the test, the labels are present. Radio buttons are there. Functionally, this works. So that test would have passed and that's how this got into production. Open table, how many people use open table? At least heard of it. So I'm a foodie, I love to go and eat. I used to live in North Carolina, anybody from North Carolina building? Okay, I'm okay, the lake and see y'all. Okay, so I used to live here um, years ago, and I go back sometimes. So I went back and I wanted to uh, go out with eight, seven of my friends, six of my friends, and seven of us, right? And North Carolina is famous for barbecue. So my favorite barbecue place is the pit. So I went on open table to make a reservation, and I chose the 7 p.m. slot. When I did that, this modal appeared, and I didn't know what to do. There was nothing in the middle there, right? If you look all the way up in this corner here, you see the two select buttons. And so I saw that, and I thought, okay, what am I selecting? You know, the buttons are not aligned. There's two of them. I got really confused. So I did what any of you would do. I opened Chrome DevTools and I started digging around to figure out what these buttons were. And when I did that, I noticed that the labels were there. They were actually just as far away from the buttons as possible. 
So me being the foodie that I am, I went ahead and completed my reservation. But I couldn't help but think, how much money is this restaurant losing? Most of their customers are not developers. They don't know anything about Chrome, their tools. Nobody's digging around in the dom to make a reservation with you, okay? And if you're a millennial like me, I'm not calling you to make the reservation. I'm just gonna go somewhere else, right? So, this again, visual bug. Think about the automated test of this. Functionally, everything is there to complete the transaction. And if you're relying on the DOM to do so, it's pretty straightforward. But you miss this visual aspect. These are not one-offs. This happens to your favorite tech companies as well. I'm probably about to step on some toes, but that's okay. Amazon. We're not here to buy something, not just buy something, increase the quantity, which means I'm multiplying the amount of money that I want to spend, right? And yet, I'm faced with this visual bug where I can't even get down past like two, right? Money loss, I know Bezos can't even feel it, but <laughs> this happens, you know, enough times, it makes a little dent. Facebook, look at that text. Look how it's all on the side of the page. This is their marketplace where they want me to come and buy something. I don't feel like buying anything when I look at this, right? It's really ugly. Again, your text, query the down. Is this text present? Yeah, girl, ship it. <laughs> Instagram, this one's bad, right? This is sponsored content, meaning someone paid the top dollar to have their uh, post displayed in this premium position, and it's all jumbled up. Like the image is missing, the text is overlapping. Your text, is this text present? Yeah, is this text present? Yeah, green, green, green. And this goes to pride. Twitter, how many of y'all on Twitter? So look at these tweets, they're overlapping. You see this, what do you do? You close the app. You just, like, I don't need to be on this hell site anyway, right? <laughs> so, again, if you were testing this automatically with your automated script that you put so much time in, you felt so good about yourself, and yet, it's still giving you false hope. Even Google, yes. Now this one is not that bad. I almost didn't put it in, but then I thought, you know, Google folks, they make a lot of money, you know? And if they have to stop innovating new features to go and fix some text on a button, like that is a gross misuse of their time, right? This is um, a point of purchase. So that means they're definitely gonna need to fix it, right? Again, what is your test gonna say? Oh. The great news is, y'all, we don't have to live like this. <laughs> Visual testing actually can be automated as well, okay? What is visual testing? So visual testing is where you take a screenshot of your application, and this is saved, and every time you run your test again, this is a regression run, it's going to take another screenshot. It's going to compare the two, right? Now, this form of testing is not entirely new, it's been around for a little bit, but the technique that we were using as an industry was flawed. We were comparing these pixel by pixel. Let me tell y'all, a lot could go wrong with doing that kind of approach. Let me show you what I mean. So, in the top picture, that's my app when I think it's beautiful, and then the next picture is a regression run, my bill has failed. Who can see why? Huh? The button. So the button at the bottom is bolded, the one at the top is not, right? Well, when your cursor is over that button, that's the hover effect. But this is an automated script, which means, I don't know, whoever runs the computers in the background had the mouse appear over this button. I didn't control that, and yet my test is failing, my continuous integration bill failed, and everybody's mad and pointing at me, right, because I wasted their time. 
So you see how flaky this is, really sensitive. Here's another one. Who can see why this one fit? The cursor is behind the word bag in the top one, but not the other one. Cursor's blank, right? So if it happens to have taken a picture when the person was solid, and then the next time when it wasn't, now I have a failure. Again, you start pulling out your hair, F these tests, that's why I want to do it anyway. You just go ahead and disable me, right? I know how y'all do. <laughs> Apple Tools has come up with a new approach to doing visual testing that uses machine learning. So instead of testing and comparing pixel by pixel, which you don't want to do, it uses the machine learning to mimic the human brain and eye and only detect the things that we would care about as users. So, I wanted to see it for myself. I took a spot for game difference. Y'all get to play y'all at the dead man walk in the last one. So, I played it for you. This is what pixel to pixel. Notice how it picks up everything. White shifts, uh, white space shifts, just every little thing, right? This is not telling me what I need to know. So you see how this is not good for testing. Versus, I ran it through Apple Tools and this picked out the things I would have as a human, okay? All right, so let's look at some code where we get to add visual testing to our test. This is a single page application, very straightforward. I got eight books here, and you can filter this by the title. For example, if I put in the word test here, notice I see the five books that have test in the title, okay? So here's my code for this test. I say, okay, I'm going to put in the word test. These are the books that I'm expecting. There's five of them. I go ahead and put their titles there. I say, go ahead and search for that test query and make sure each of the books in my array are there and make sure they're the only ones in there. So I should only have five of these things or however many is in my array here. Okay? Good. Now, CSS. Anybody who was in Homer's talk, I said, when y'all say, yeah, I'm a CSS expert, and I yell down loud, I guess. That's just me hating, because I'm not the best at CSS, right? So, you know, I learned a little something, and I want to add, maybe say, a bouncy effect to my app. And I add line six here, right? But I have tests. That means I can do what I want. So I check this bad boy in. Again, this is the test. When I run that test, this is what the application looks like. This is on my bill, not me running locally, right? I checked it in already. So this is what the app looks like, because with that single line of CSS, I literally flipped my app on its head. And y'all wonder why I don't like CSS. <laughs> I'm kidding, don't, don't buy the drag. All right, so my test, I have my test, I have my test. So my test is running, and it's green. Nothing is red here. Why? Again, what did I tell you? It's querying the DOM. So my test asks, are these five books there? Yeah, there are five books. The titles, mm, all of them. And it passed, right? So visual testing, I can rewrite that test to be more streamlined, right? So I say, go ahead, search for the query of text, and then those three lines there, that's all I need for visual testing. I say, open your eyes, poetry. Then I said, check the window. Check the window, this is the magic command. So with that, it's gonna take the picture for me. It's going to send it up to the Appetus Cloud. It's gonna store it there so I don't have to worry about storing this stuff on my, um, you know, my computer or my server. And if it's a regression run, if it's the first run, it's gonna save that as the baseline automatically for me, right? If this is a regression run, then it's going to do the comparison to the baseline it already has stored. And then finally, close your eyes, we're done here. Okay? So if I ran that same test using visual testing with Apple Tools, this is the dashboard I see. Notice my test did fail this time because it's not looking at the DOM, it's looking on the surface. Alright? So don't let me sell your pipe dream. Let's talk about some pros and cons with using visual testing, right? So pros, we're gonna start on the positive note. Of course, I now got rid of that inattentional blindness I told you about, and I 
am able to, you know, capture everything on this page and verify it. So, with less code, I actually got more coverage for my test, which is great. I like the leading code. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, what else? What other pros here? Uh, anybody else see any other pros? So we said more coverage. Oh, um, the less cold. So I like to say a picture is worth like a thousand assertions. It not just captures the things that I thought about. It captures anything that I didn't think about. If a pink elephant flies across the screen, it's going to catch that, right? Where I did have an assertion explicitly for that. Cons. It's capturing everything. <laughs> so if my test doesn't care about this, let's say that title, automation bookstore, we decide to change the name of the app or the, or the title on the page, right? Now, my test is failing. But I don't really care about that. All I cared about was the search functionality, okay? So the good news is that Applitools, Applitools is so flexible. This API can pretty much do whatever it is that you need to do. So I can scope this down to a specific area on the page or even to the element level. So let's say, for example, I wanted to search for Azure testing. And I want to do the check window, but this time, I don't want the whole window. I want to target a specific region, and I give it the selector to do so. And when I do that, now it's just going to take a picture of that node versus the entire page, okay? Pros and cons. Pro, of course, I get to scope it down, only test the things that I care about. Con, I kind of reintroduced the inattentional blindness. For example, let's say that search is broken, and I enter the word test here, and nothing happens. That test that we just ran, how many people say that test is going to fail? How many people say that test is going to pass? How many, huh? This one. Okay, let's go back, let's go back. Drill through the balance out. How many say that this test is going to fail? How many say the test is going to pass? Oops. Pass? How many people are just on the edge of their seats waiting on the answer? <laughs> All right. So that test is actually going to pass because what we told it was find that one book and make sure that it's visually perfect. And they say, yeah, it looks amazing, right? And again, we get stuck with this situation, even though we have all of this. So, what I'm trying to tell you, and Mish will have my back on this, this machine learning stuff, you can't rely on it. Y'all have a really bad habit of doing that, myself included, right? I can't tell you how many teams I've worked with or consulted with, and they say something like, oh, that's the machine learning feature. We'll have to test it, or whatever, right? And we're putting this blind faith in machine learning and thinking that it's going to cover all our bases. You are yet still supposed to be in control, right? You're the engineer here. You still need to think of how to craft this to let the box work for you. You don't work for them, all right? So, since I reintroduced the unintentional blindness, I'm going to add another line here that says, okay, go ahead and scope it down to that one element, but make sure that's the only element on the page. So now I'm coupling my functional assertions with my visual assertions. So it doesn't have to be one or the other. You can mix and match here, all right? What about dynamic content? That's a question that I get a lot. You say, well, I don't have a static site. Mine is pretty dynamic. Surely I can't use visual testing. Actually, you can. So, match levels are different algorithms for the image comparison. So, by default, we were using a strict match level. We didn't have to specify that. But if we wanted to use something different, we could. There's actually 
for them. There's exact which does pixel to pixel. We say no to pixel to pixel, don't use that one. Strict is the default. There's a content one that essentially ignores color and only verifies your content. And then there's this layout one that uses machine learning in a different way. Machine learning happens to be really great at detecting patterns. So it uses this to detect the pattern on your page and make sure every regression run, your test or your application still follows that same pattern, right? So when I was working at Twitter, we used this mode for the tweets. Tweets have a certain anatomy, right? A profile pic, a bolded name, a username, maybe some media, some text, etc. So it makes sure that it follows that pattern and it's not overlapping or anything like that. News companies use this one. We don't know what the headlines are going to say, but we know this should be the structure of the application, okay? Um, so with this one, I switched the order of the books. In the first picture, which is my baseline, I have advanced selenium followed by cucumber. In the regression run, I have cucumber followed by advanced selenium. Maybe we don't know the order the books are going to appear in, but we still want to do some visual testing. We can do that. What this is going to do, look for the structure of the page. We have, I imagine it's saying, okay, I got some boxes here. I got a little purple thing at the top with some white text. I got a big old image and, you know, yada, yada, you get the gist. Okay? Pros and cons. Pro, very flexible. Doesn't matter what your data is. And test data is a nightmare to manage. Am I right? Yes, of course I am. And... <laughs> The, so I don't have to worry about that part. That's definitely a pro, very flexible. The con is it's ignoring my data. So if my data happens to be wrong, it would not catch that for me. For example, if I was switching those books, I also accidentally left the authors in place. So instead of Paul writing his book, I say Seth wrote it or something like that, it's not gonna catch that. It's going to fail. So I only use this one for things like maybe a smoke test, Make sure my app is up, looks okay, and then I do some more detailed testing. Or I'll use it like when I'm doing some back-end testing, so some APIs or something, I'm verifying my data that way. But I still want to make sure that the user interface looks okay. I'll just run a quick um, test on the layout. All right? Now, you can also run these tests very easily across multiple platforms and devices, so multiple browsers, multiple viewports, multiple um, mobile devices. And this is probably one of my favorite um, features of the product. So I write my test once. Anybody who's had to write tests across multiple platforms, a nightmare, right? You start thinking about the different elements, the hamburger menu, you have to put all this condition in your code. I don't have to do that anymore. What I'm gonna do is write my test once for any platform. Let's say uh, Chrome on the desktop. I run that test that one time. When I call the eyes.check window, it's going to grab the state of my application. And what I mean by state, it's gonna grab the DOM, it's going to grab the JavaScript, the CSS, all my images, all of the resources I need to render this page, and it's going to blast that across all of the platforms that I have specified and make sure it looks visually perfect on all of them. Because it's grabbing the state and not executing all of the steps it takes me to get to the part where I'm actually doing validation, this is really fast to do and it does it all in parallel. So, to specify this, starting on line four, I go ahead and add this browser array to my open call and I have objects specifying all the configs. So here I have Firefox, Chrome, and IE. We also support Safari, um, Edge, etc. And then I have iPhone 10 in both Portrait and Landscape mode, as well as Galaxy S5. Okay. Notice my test on line 17. I didn't have to touch my test because I put this in the before. This will run for all of the tests that I'm doing visual testing. Okay, and then notice, it'll render that. I don't have any of these devices on uh, my laptop. I have, you know, maybe Chrome and Firefox, but it's not using my stuff, it's using their stuff in the cloud. All right, and this is what the dashboard looks like. Instead of the one test, it ran all of them. It showed me these here, and then specified 
like what device that was running in. So I can easily see my one test across multiple configurations. Y'all need that. <laughs> All right. Even works with Storybook. Anybody use Storybook design? Okay, beautiful. Um, so if you want to test your components, before we put this out for all the developers to use in their pages, we can run this, you know, as part of the build, make sure that individually our components look like we want them to look. All right? And that is visual testing in a nutshell. Can I entertain any questions? Yeah? So what's the site to the Beautiful. Okay, so the visual testing part, the part that says side dot eyes open, eyes check window, eyes closed, that's Amplitude. Amplitude integrates with any of the testing tools you're using. So if you're using Cypress, integrates with that. If you're using Playwright, you're using Selenium, whatever, Jess, whatever you're using, it integrates with that. Yeah. The question. So in case anybody didn't hear, the question was, when I take the picture, where does that go? Where is that being stored? What's the size look like and all of that? This is being stored in the Applitudes cloud. You don't have to worry about size or anything like that. It's not stored in your area unless you want it to. So this is free to use, right? It's not a trial. It's forever free. There are upgrade plans, right? So if you work for like healthcare or financial services, and you like, look, I can't store my stuff in, in no cloud. <laughs> you can get on-premise solution. You got to pay for that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you think tactical would have saved us all the examples? That's how it's supposed to happen. Earlier with my video? Those screenshots you showed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, definitely. Yep, definitely. Uh, hi. Okay, then come right back to you. 
Go ahead. Uh, how long would it take a test like this to run? Like a couple of seconds you could expect? Or less yeah, it takes a couple of seconds, but it is slower than if you didn't do the visual testing, right? So there's some latency there. It has to take a picture, it has to send it up to the attitude pile, and it has to do a comparison. So using like the classic mode, I would say I would add about another eight seconds or so on my test. Um, if you use the, the grid one, so the ultra fast grid where I talked about um, doing the cross platform testing, that one uses a different technique. So that one's much faster. So I would say probably about the same time as if you did use it. Uh, So the storybook part covers like the component. I like to think of that as like unit test for front end. Um, if you're doing something that does not have a visual aspect to it, like you're doing some unit test of some method that's just doing a calculation, then there's no need to use something like this. So only the ones where um, you're just doing something visually, right? So you could scope it down to components, you could scope it down to you know, different widgets or something like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you have another question? The last part said animations. Oh, that's a great question. So there's some like adventurous people, they tell me this work. I wouldn't do this. But they say, oh yeah, we use it for like videos or animations and stuff like that. I don't think that's a great idea <laughs> um, because of the timing of it all, but they swear to me it works. But like I said, this is so flexible. You can annotate these images. You can do that programmatically or on the dashboard. So I can say for this animation, ignore it. Or I can use, I can mix and match those algorithms that I told you about. So let's say I want to do the dynamic content on the, um, the animation, but for the rest of it I want to do strict. Or maybe this part where it has a timestamp, I want to ignore that part. So you can mix and match the algorithms all on one picture. That's cool. All right, any other questions? All right, thank y'all so much. Oh, wait. Ooh. Oh, yes? Yeah, you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. All right, so it integrates with any CICD tool you're doing. If you're not using CICD, you're just running your test and you're just vibing, you know, you can do that too. <laughs> do that too. All right? Cool. All right, if you think of anything else, come and find me. I'll be here all day. Thank y'all so much.